thank you for joining me for another episode of Platypus Knitting. My name is Bobby Ollan and I am a knitter based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I've started up this channel to talk about uh, knitting because I'm a bit knitting obsessed, um, but hopefully that will expand out into other fibre crafts eventually. Um, right now I'm still very much, well, Actually, I would, shouldn't say right now because I've been in this uh, headspace for a long time now where um, all I really want to do is knit and anything else just takes away time from knitting. So who knows when I will ever uh, start any other crafts, but that is the eventual plan. Um, I do have to say life has just been quite busy lately. So um, I had grand plans at the start of um, this pod, this vlog, sorry, um, to put a video out every two weeks, and clearly that just has not happened at all. Um, so the goal now is to do monthly episodes, um, and even this one is. Uh, <laughs> late but hopefully you know things are going to start calming down um so in australia um our financial year this is a bit boring our financial year is from july until june so um work has just been a bit crazy busy which has taken up a lot of my energy which is why i haven't well part of the reason why i haven't put out uh, a video in a while and just haven't had time to you know do much else um, but now that we are uh, in a new financial year um, hopefully that means things will start calming down and I will have more time to do this and to do this and to do this um, yes so today I wanted to talk to you um, about um, a place to craft having a place to craft um, and how that's in, how important that is why it's important whether it's important for you or for me I should say um, it's just something that I've been that I've thought about lately because I haven't um, been up here which is my craft room in oh the heat is just turned off so hopefully you can hear me better now um, I haven't been up here crafting in my craft room for quite a while um yeah I, I mentioned in the previous episode that I've actually um been using this space as my home office since I've been working from home um so I haven't really been up here much doing crafty things I've been mainly been sitting downstairs in the living room in front of the telly um doing my knitting and browsing Ravelry and all of that kind of thing so um yeah, I've kind of just been wondering whether I actually need a space like this. Um, this is the first uh, home that we've had that uh, where I have had uh, my own craft room. Um, everywhere else that we've been, it's just been, I, I just haven't, I haven't really had a dedicated space. Um, it's mainly just been sitting on the couch crafting. Um, which actually may, I may have actually forgotten that in, I think the second place that my partner and I lived in, um, it was this tiny little apartment, but it did have, it was a tiny little two bedroom apartment. And I was actually using the second bedroom as um, a craft room. I can't remember if I had that all to myself. I really seriously had completely forgotten about that until I just started talking right now but um that was back in the day when I was a bookbinder so what I had in there was things like um a hot foiling machine um a book press a, a sewing frame um and I had this gorgeous gorgeous cabinet full of lead type it was so beautiful um yeah I I don't think I, I can't remember if um, 
Ben got to have any space in there, but surely he did. Surely he had a desk, but maybe not. Anyway, yeah, I can't believe I completely forgot about that. So I lied. This is my second craft room, but I guess this is my first craft room since um, I've taken up knitting. Um, yeah, pretty lucky. <laughs> Um, yeah, so how this room is currently set up is this little corner is kind of my knitting space. I've got a couple of side tables here. Um, one usually holds my knitting bag or basket or whatever is holding my knitting and on, on the other side is where I've got my drink. I've got like a messy little, um, a messy little magnetized like needle holder thing there and this side's just kind of usually messy, but I've cleared it. I mean, you can't even see it now, but I've cleared it for now. Um, and then I've got like one of those old writing bureaus. that's just got some stuff in it along this wall. And then I've got the desk along the far wall where I work. Um, I have also, of course, done sewing on that desk um but you know it's the kind of thing i need to clear all the work stuff off it make sure you know there's enough space for fabric and and get my sewing machine on there so it is a bit of an effort so um i really have to be in the mood for sewing to to reorganize that whole space to do it um yeah and i would like to do there are things that i'd like to sew but um again i just want to knit um, <laughs> yeah, so there's like a funny little, like, the, the room's like not quite a square. It's got like a funny little extra section in that corner where I've just got like the, a fan and rubbish bins and I don't really need to talk about that. Um, and then there's the door and then in that corner against that wall, um, there's a built-in closet. Um, so I do have... Uh, clothes in there but half of it is um, crafting items Ooh, crafting items so I've got uh, some shelves that have some some fabric for my sewing um, some odd random things that I've knit just as like testing things to play around um, I've got a couple of uh, like document tray things that have sewing threads and rulers and scissors i have a lot of scissors and rulers um and uh some paper craft there's yeah all my paper craft stuff is kind of hidden away in there and again like i barely have time to do all that kind of stuff but i do enjoy it when i do it so i i keep hanging on to it thinking one day i'll get back into this one day i'll do it again but you know um stuff for making cards and stamping things and washi tapes and what have you and of course i do have um yarn stored in there as well i've got yarn stored in this cabinet over here as well but yarn stored in there um my sewing machine is in there my blocking mats are in there um so that is the closet and then i've got one of those um those ikea shelves that's just like you know the square ones that's that are like really modular um i used to have that flush against the wall but i kind of like have it sticking out from the wall um almost like the miniest tiniest little divider um, between my knitting chair and um the closet um i did that partly because it just uh like I, I, I felt like it made this tiny little area just that tiny little bit more enclosed and more of like its own special little space within the room rather than just have this one big open room. But also um, I do like that I can now um, store and access things on both sides of the shelves. Um, and then that brings us back to my little knitting chair. Um, yeah, so like I said, I haven't really been knitting up here all that much um, in the last few months. And um, my my partner and I have 
started thinking again about uh, the possibility of buying our own place because we're, we're still just renting and we'd, we've been wanting for a long time to get our own place but like there's always something that's just not quite right um, so we drop it and then we come back to it and then we drop it and we come back to it and right now we've come back to it and there was one place that we were looking at um, where um, like it had enough bedrooms and everything that I could still have had my own craft space but we were talking about it and I actually think that or I decided for that particular place that I would rather have an actual guest room in case we wanted to have anyone to stay um, rather than have a craft room because I did realize that I'm not crafting in here all that much so why do I need it um, if I'm just knitting sure I need all of the storage for my knitting stuff but the beauty of knitting is that it's so portable and you can do it anywhere and I like I really like doing it in the living room lately because um, our downstairs is kind of a little bit open plan. So the living room is down one end and then it's kind of like an open space that leads into where Ben has his, his desk. So it's kind of nice. It's been nice both of us being down there working on our separate things together. Um, yeah so yeah so i've just been thinking about whether uh you know having I, I feel like having a craft room is this idealized thing and it is wonderful and i have loved having this room where i can just make as much mess as um <laughs> as i want to or as i feel like i need to but is it really necessary for me so I've been thinking about it and I was thinking, well, what, what do I actually need a dedicated room for? Like even sewing, which I rarely do. Does it really, do I really need a, like a space with a dedicated table for it? Like, no, probably not. Um, but of course, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, actually it would be great if, you know, I did have, um, a space of my own and I was trying to kind of plan out like how I'd have the layout in my head and what I'd really want in there um, and I, I remembered that I do have um, a knitting machine so just one of those really really old ones that's like the long thing and you just move the shuttle back and forth and it just knits um, stock in it and it also has an attachment for doing ribbing um, and that has, that is actually pretty fun to use. But again, it's, it's just this big awkward thing to have to like pull out of the cupboard and make space for and lay out there. But it would be amazing if I did have a room where I could have my little knitting corner with like a nice sofa or a nice armchair. And then I'd love to have, yeah, a, a table where I could permanently have that knitting machine out. Um, sewing machine could possibly permanently be out but I'm not like I don't need that as much um, and the other things that I would love to have out and accessible is still my book binding stuff um, because I do still well I still really like the idea of all of that kind of stuff and I have hung on to um, a book press and a sewing frame um, and it, and they're also just beautiful pieces of equipment. So it would be lovely if I could have them out in a room. And it is something that I have actually missed um, over the last few months. And I've and I've I've actually felt like doing it a couple of times. But then the thought of like having to pull those equipment out of the garage and set them up here and find a space for it just to have to like pack it away again that kind of put me off so yeah I don't need a craft room but it would be it would be quite nice to have so yeah that's just something I've been thinking about lately you know need versus want and yeah I feel like yeah I, I think I also felt like in the next place that we get because um I got to have this room to myself and Ben's just kind of in this 
open area that isn't completely his own space. Like it's definitely his own space, but you know, it's an open plant space that's got a living room on one side and the kitchen on the other. So um, I, I don't know if, you know, I want him to have like a, a, his turn of having um, a room of his own for his own things. And, and the, the, you know, he's got creative things that he works on and, and he's got his, he's got his computers and he's got like this set up in his head that he would love to have and I want him to have that and I feel like I've definitely had my turn of having the craft rooms so yeah that's been just been an interesting realization that I've had um lately about craft rooms um so yeah um yeah so that brings us to stat chat um, which is just a really simple, again, just thinking about craft rooms. So um, I have an app that I use um, that's actually on my watch and on my phone where um, I like to track how long it takes me um, to, you know, to do all of my knitting on because, you know, I, I'm just interested in seeing how long it takes me to make a sweater, you know, am I getting any faster, which I don't think I am um but it's kind of just I, I I like having it I like having a tracker and I like seeing you know what I've been working on and it just helps me keep track of my progress as well so I if I put a project down and don't touch it for weeks or months which happens a lot then I've got um I've got an app that's kind of helped me keep my place and I have a notebook as well where I write everything down but sometimes I forget the notebook and I, I I wear this every day so I pretty much never forget to um to track my knits on here um but anyway because I have that um and I'm able to track what projects I've worked on um and knowing the the projects that I've done up here and knowing the projects that I've done downstairs in the living room um I I can guess pretty accurately I think that I have spent in 2021 so in the last six months um, I'm pretty sure I've spent something like eight days knitting up here and 88 days downstairs in the living room um, so yeah that is approximately nine percent of my knitting time done here which isn't much so do I need it probably not um, it might help to have a more comfortable chair too, but yeah, who knows? Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I was also thinking, so that's a total of like 96 days. Um, and that's an average of, um, knitting every second day. And I really would like to knit more than that. And I definitely have reasons this year, um, for not knitting. Um, there have been just a few difficult personal things that have gone on, but the start of the year, I was definitely a lot more prolific with my knitting and my crafting, and then it kind of petered out and hopefully I'm getting, you know, I get back into the swing of things or I'm getting back in, into the swing of things and it doesn't, um, the motivation doesn't go again, but you know we'll see if you don't feel like it you don't feel like it. it's a hobby that you do that you love so why would you force yourself to do it um but yeah anyway that's a bit of a bit of a protracted stat chat there for you um so the next segment that i uh want to or that we've come to is um eye candy so this one is a bit of an obscure one um in the past, the whole two episodes that I've done, um, the eye, my eye candy has been looking at patterns that I've wanted to knit. Um, this one is actually a tool, which is uh, the Speedweave Darner, and there's quite a few of them on Etsy. Um, there are some beautiful, gorgeous vintage ones that you can get, um, and they come in all different sizes. And I have also seen um, more modern ones um, one in particular that comes to mind is one that is a, a laser cut one by Katrinkles. Um, yeah, I think actually 
that's the one that I first discovered um, that was this, you know, this, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tool that's basically like a mini weaving type tool thing that you, you stick underneath or into, um, it, do, it doesn't even have to be knitwear, like a lot of the photos on, on Etsy, you see the patching jeans and things like that, but you just pop it there and it holds your threads so that you can weave a lovely looking patch. Um, and it's something that's been on my Etsy wish list for, um, quite a while now, and I've never bought it. Um, first I was looking at darning mushrooms and then I discovered these things and I thought, oh, hey, that's really neat. Um, Peter's back. Um, but then, you know, I think initially I wasn't sure if, would I, would I like that? Would I use that if I'm repairing knits and it's a weave rather than, um, like just, like knitting to try to blend in and hide the patch um but I think the more that I've seen it the more that I do like it and and I've seen a few I mean actually yeah how do I say the like visible mending has been a bit of a thing lately and and I like it that you know not trying to hide that something has been worn and loved to the point of breaking um and then you fix it up so that you can just wear it more again because you love it so much um yeah and i like that idea um yeah i like that idea that it would be visible and it's just showcasing like another skill really um but i think yeah, the reason I never went ahead and bought one is, well, yeah, first of all, I couldn't decide whether I wanted something like that or whether I just wanted to get a mushroom or whether I have actually been fine just mending things the way I've been doing, which is like this, like I've patched this sock that I've knit for Ben, pair of socks, there's another one, um, a couple of times already. And the way that I kind of do it, which has been working for this because the the holes aren't huge or the threadbare areas aren't huge. I kind of just stick my hand in and um, stretch it out a little bit. And as you know, I'm, uh, oh my gosh, I have forgotten the name for um, duplicate stitch. As I, as I duplicate stitch, um, I kind of just am always just giving it a, a stretch one way and then the other way just to make sure that I'm not, um, duplicate stitching um, too tightly um, and that's been fine for these little patches um, so I haven't felt like I've needed to actually get a tool um, even though they would make it much easier um, although I do have to say for this one now I don't know I'm not really a hundred percent sure how I'm gonna do this one um, because it is right it's the heel turn, basically. Um, so that's gonna be a bit tricky just to make sure that I get the shaping right. Um, yeah, but you know, I don't know that getting something like the speed with Diner would actually help with it. Um, but it might be interesting to try. Um, but anyway, um, the other reason that I haven't gone ahead and just bought a speed weave is because I thought, like, do I really have anything that I'd use it on? Um, aside from things like this sock, which I'm perfectly happy just duplicate stitching, obviously. Um, and then I realized, I don't know how I had completely overlooked it, but I actually have this sweater, which is a Sassenbide sweater um, that one of my sisters was getting rid of um, and I just claimed because I like it. Um, it's still very, very soft and very, very warm. But let me just see if I can get my hands in here for you to show you. It does have a couple of holes. So one, 
is there at the left cuff and the other one is around about the right elbow where is it there it is there you go so um i obviously never wear this out um i wear it at home a lot and i keep telling myself that i'm eventually going to um fix it up i've got some four ply black merino that i can use to mend this that i've been planning to use to mend both of these holes um i wonder what this is made out of it doesn't really say but anyway um yeah i was always planning to use my black yarn again to make it invisible but then it, it did occur to me it would be really fun if i got one of those speed weave darners and um made a colorful patch um yeah and then and then i would happily wear it out instead of just keeping it as a cozy very warm snuggly um oh, sweater um you probably can't see it because it's black i don't know maybe you can it's a bit dirty ignore that but it does have you know it's got a nice cable pat pattern down the front and the rest of it is just a rib which is basically like a three by one rib which is the same that's that's on the sleeves so you know if i did want to um knit those with the black that'd be pretty easy to to replicate but i am quite liking the idea of um of using the speed weave diner and actually weaving a colorful little patch i have to say i'm pretty impressed with this that you know it hasn't like just completely broken that edge there that that cuff has actually stayed because that would have been really annoying but anyway yeah i have my eye on a speed weave diner um yeah they they come in different sizes so i guess i'd find one that's about that kind of fits that size for now and start with that and i guess you know if i love it and i want to get a bigger one or a smaller one then I, I go from there, but um, yeah, hopefully that eye candy will soon be um, a handy dandy to show you. So, handy dandy, um, I wanted to talk about the Scandium socks by General Hog Buffer. Um, so I'll put a photo of them up, but it is um, a, a sock that I have knitted already. So um, I've, before these socks, I had only um, knit socks for my partner, Ben, before. So, whoopsies. So this one that you saw me darning, these were the first socks that I ever made him that he loves. And he's I've knitted uh, a couple of other pairs for him as well. But I've never knit any for myself. But when I saw this pattern um, for Scandium, I loved it so much that I just I decided that I would knit uh, a matching set for Ben and myself. So I started with my one, and I do have to say they're also my first Feral socks. Um, so that's one of mine there. I've got tiny little feet, um, and that's the other one there. So you can't you can't see it as well in my one um, how it sort of graduates from the solid color at the cuff to uh, more and more of your contrast color until the toe is completely in the contrast color. And I stuffed up because I didn't read the instructions properly about choosing um, yarn and how to, you know, how, like the things you need to consider when you're working with um, a variegated yarn and pairing that with a, a solid yarn. Um, and because I didn't pay attention, I had yarn that 
didn't have enough contrast so you can't actually you miss out on seeing most of the pattern so it kind of just looks like speckles here and there which still looks nice but um you know you don't get the full effect of the pattern but that's fine um the other thing about these socks is um i i kind of just this pattern actually comes in just the one size, um, so I had to do a bit of calculating to um, get it to my size. And really, it's it's a the pattern is a, a at least at the start. I think it's like a twelve stitch repeat. So I just had to eliminate one repeat. And I do have to say that the leg here, um, just because of how sterile is and that it's just got less give um it takes quite a bit of tugging to get my heel through that section there but once it's through it fits really well and it's so incredibly comfortable um but yeah that was something new for me to learn in in working feral socks um what else can i say about this pattern um I found the I found it a bit confusing working the heel flap. I just wasn't a hundred percent sure. Um, it it's a slip stitch heel, and I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Um, like the best way to to work that in two colors. So these heels are actually done differently. Um, so one of them, I think. Yeah, this one, in this one, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I um, I would do two rows in the solid and then two rows in the contrast. Um, and that's how I did the heel flap. With this one, you really, you're really not gonna be able to tell because of my poor yarn color choices, but I'll still hold it up there for you. But with this one, I tried for more of a checkerboard effect. Um, and of course, that has made this heel a lot looser, a lot, and it has a lot more stretch than this one. But they're equally as comfortable. And from that, because of my poor yarn choice, I couldn't really decide which one I liked better but um yeah they i mean they both they both worked um but yeah i think i wasn't sure if it was if i just couldn't wrap my head around the way that the instructions were written or yeah i think i think i just yeah i think i just got a bit confused and i wasn't reading things properly um so anyway that was when I was knitting them for myself. Um, so I have made uh, good progress on the ones that I'm knitting for Ben. So there's one there that's about, that's ready to get onto the heel flap. And this one um, has a lot more progress. So for this, see, look how much, look, see, see what happens when you choose good yarn. You can see the pattern. Can I bring this closer for you? But yeah, how different is that from the one that I've done for myself? You can actually see what the design is. Um, anyway, so for this one, um, which way did I do it? Can't even remember. Mm. Yeah, with this one, um, it, mm, yeah, I think I did it the two rows and then two rows. Which looks quite nice. The problem that I've had, oh, and first I should say um, the issue with the leg um, that I had for this one, with it being just too small. Um, for this one, I've actually used a uh, one needle size up to knit that bit and then for the rest of it, um, I've used the recommended needle size. Um, and I do have to say that I kind of just, with this one, I kind of just went for it. I didn't swatch or anything because I've used this yarn and these needles before and I just figured it should be right. But then I did um, 
compare it in size because I started thinking, gee, that looks a bit huge. And I compared it in size. And you can see how much bigger it is from that one there. So this was supposed to be a surprise and I, I had to tell Ben that I was making them and asked him to try them on and they fit. They're not super loose. They're not fitted either though. So yeah, they're not, they're kind of like just the right size right now just to sit around his foot, thankfully. Um, and hopefully it will um, tighten up a bit after washing. But yeah, the back to what I was saying was the problem that I have run into here is um, I'd measured how much of the contrast yarn I used in these socks and I had some leftover Lorna's Laces yarn that I really wanted to use as the contrast color for this. And what I had left was just about exactly what I'd used for these, or maybe just the tiniest bit more, like a couple of grams. And I thought, that's perfect. I'll, I'm gonna have the right amount of yarn. Um, so I went for it, and of course I didn't consider that his ones are getting made at a bigger size, and also they'll be longer. So for this sock here, I've run out because I split the, the my leftover bit of Lorna's laces in half and I've run out and it's meant to have a bit more of um, a bit more of patterning until it just becomes um, like speckles and then the toe is meant to be all in the contrast color and I don't have enough which is very disappointing so um, the first idea I had was that I would finish it in the pattern and use a different yarn. And I was thinking of using this yarn here that I used to make this sock. But again, it's going to have that same problem that I had with this one, um, where there's going to be areas of it that just will blend in and you won't be able to see the pattern and I don't really like that plus I'm not really sure how that would that wouldn't really go um yeah so the second idea that I had was just to stop there and knit the rest of it in the main color but I don't know that's just also kind of sad and boring um <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess I have the option of trying to find more Lorna's laces, but I am still trying to knit through stash and not have to do that. And, um, while I was planning out this episode, it occurred to me after weeks of thinking about it, it only just occurred to me that what I could do, um, and I will try it with this sock first because I haven't done the heel yet is instead of doing this lovely color work heel flap that I've done here with this neck sock I will just do the heel flap and the heel turn in just this color because I've got ugh, plenty I've got plenty of that left so if I just do all of that that big chunk of knitting just in that color then maybe I'll have enough of the Lorna's laces, the white Lorna's laces, to at least finish the color work pattern. And if it's not enough to do a toe in it, that's more acceptable to me, but I hope that, I really hope that I can at least finish the pattern. But yeah, that is Scandium. So yeah, wish me luck with that. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, I am also still making progress on my opposite pole um, cardigan, which I really should call an opposite pole vest because that's what it's gonna be for me. But um, I have left that downstairs because I work on that one downstairs. 
um, since I pulled this out, I will just mention it really briefly. Um, just like these socks have kind of almost ended up too wide, this one is way too long. Let's compare it to my tiny feet. I mean, sure, I have small feet, but like that difference, heel to toe, that's just crazy. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, actually, that's a lie. I do know what I was thinking. With this one here, um, I, tried, I tried a few things. Um, I should say this is the Skype rib pattern. Skype, skip, it's S-K-Y-P, which is actually um, the pattern that's in it. Um, it's Skype rib sock. Um, and what I had done, one thing I had done with this one was um, I read a few things online about how some people um, don't like the, the bumpy feel of the pearl bumps on the sole of their foot, which Ben never complained about. But I thought I would try with this sock to knit um, the bottom of it in reverse stockinette so that it would be all nice and smooth for him inside. Um, and the second thing that I wanted to try um, is having a contrast toe heel and cuff um, so that's not so, that's something that's not specific to the pattern that's something that I put in myself um, and then the third thing that I tried which is the thing that stuffed this thing up and made it long actually I probably can't blame the method I'm just blame, I, like the real um, the real person to blame is myself and just not understanding enough about sock construction and and how to measure things and when to start things but anyway what I'm trying to say is um I tried for the first and only time to use my own choice of heel construction and not use the one that was in the pattern so I had looked a few things up and I decided that I wanted to try one called the Flegel heel. Um, which I think the, he like, the heel itself has worked out fine. My problem was that I started it way too late. I'm pretty sure um, this is knit from the toe up. So I started the heel at this point, and I probably should have started it like way up here or something, um, because it just, I think I just wasn't expecting that it would add length. And of course, of course it does, because it, you don't just, you know, if you knit the whole leg up to there, you can't just have it, you know, turn a corner, it needs space, like, you know, it needs, like to curve around so of course it's going to add length to it so um this fits no one because it is insanely long and it's just been sitting in the cupboard for ages and ages and um one day one day i will try to fix it but not any not anytime soon too many new things that i want to knit um yeah, so I guess that is the end of Handy Dandy. Um, so the last thing that I talk about is uh, Heartful of Craft. Um, and I guess the thing that I am grateful for, um, I, yeah, I, I kind of like trying to tie Heartful of Craft into things that I've talked about previously. Um, and even though I guess it doesn't follow on from what I've been talking about most recently, um, I do um i am very grateful for the space that i have and having a craft room um yeah I, it's such a luxury to have a craft room um and i'm very much aware of that and i'm very much aware that not everyone you know can have a space of their own where they can you know do their hobbies and and, and that kind of thing. So um, I'm grateful for having my own space. Um, and I'm also grateful for just 
having the luxury of choice about where I get to craft. So actually, aside from here and downstairs in the living room, our bedroom has um, an armchair next to the window that's overlooking the golf course across the road, which I just think of as a lovely park. Um, so really, in this house, I've got three places where I can knit, which is amazing. So um, very grateful for all of that space. Um, and that brings us to the end of this episode of Platypus Knitting. Thanks again for joining me. Um, I should do the plugs. <laughs> so um, if you like this video, please um, hit the like button and subscribe so you can uh, see when the next one comes out. Hopefully that will be in a month. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram uh, at Platypus Knitting and I am on Ravelry um, under my own name, Bobby Olin. So feel free to look me up there as well. Um, thank you for joining me. So long and knit on.